would ask for a motion to approve the minutes. So move. Second. Second. Okay. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the motion carries and the minutes are approved. Uh, we now have an opportunity to receive comments or questions from the public. Is there anyone from the public who wishes to make any comments at this time? Let's see, does anybody sign up? Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, no public comments at the moment. Uh, we now have to review and consider an amendment to the fiscal year 2017 capital budget. And I have a feeling that Shannon is going to walk us through that. Or John. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, it's simple enough that I can hand it to the chair. Okay. You would turn to tab two, uh, blue tab two, page four. Uh, th this uh, administrative action. Uh, we sold uh, bonds, um, I guess, what date? Earlier this month. Earlier this, when we closed earlier this month, $8 million issue. And so we wanted to incorporate that money into the budget in a simple adding of the bond revenues, under revenues, and then identifying about $8 million for mobility improvements, as you can see on page four. So nothing else changes, no. literally, addition on the revenue side yeah. and the addition on the budget. Anybody have any questions about that? So moved. Okay, does anybody want to make a motion approving it? I move. And second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. All of any opposed? No? Great. The motion carries. Okay, we're now going to review and consider our proposed tax rate for tax year 2016. Um, I'll, uh, I'll try to lead us through that as well. Okay, great. Tab 2, page 5. Uh, this is a standard procedure that we go through on an annual basis. I want to just hit very quickly. Uh, you, in June of this year, uh, approved a, uh, looked at our projected assessed value uh, and approved a tax rate of 14.345 cents. That's out actually be broken down, but the total track the tax rate is 14.345 as per our June budget. We now come to the point in, in the year where we actually levy that tax rate. And so if you would look uh, on page five, I, I want to actually take you through this. Uh, we want to, today, we, we're going to request a motion uh, proposing the proposed tax rate of 0 0.14345 for $100 assessed value for tax year 2016. Uh, this is the same tax rate that was adopted for uh, tax year 2015. Once we do that, I'm going to uh, ask you to authorize the publication of a notice of the 2016 proposed tax rate, in which the final tax rate for 2016 will be adopted at the district's board meeting next month, Wednesday, October 19th. This is procedural, uh, and uh, it, it, on page five, basically explains what I just explained. Over on page six is the notice that would be, uh, be placed uh, in the newspaper. Uh, the key thing here is that if our tax rate, if our tax revenue, Stephen, correct? It's the tax revenue received from residential homes tax. If it tax. goes over 8%. It increases by more than 8%. Uh, it, it triggers something called a potential for a rollback election. Uh, what this does on page six and on page seven specifically, it calculates that and we end up with an increase for those homestead residential properties of 4.5%. Therefore, we're not subject to a rollback election, uh, but we nonetheless have to put this calculation in the newspaper for the residents of this area to have notice, to, of, to have notice of it. And so we're glad to answer any questions uh, Stephen or I would uh, but it's pretty straightforward uh, confirming the tax rate that you set in June at 14.345 and then uh, authorizing us to put it in the, the newspaper uh, at, for public notice. So John in effect this is the second of the three step process is that right? Correct. So we, we discussed the rate previously right. now we're going to officially propose it right. and then after the notice period and the public hearing, we're then going to officially adopt it. That 
Are that, that part of the question? process? Is that part of the question? <coughs> Are there any questions about it? That I wanted to go back over it so that we all remember we've had a discussion already about tax breaks once before. But if anybody has any questions, now would be a good time. Where are we on the such value versus the first meeting where we did not have? I'm going to ask Shannon. Uh, she's well, we're, we approved the budget um, projecting a $6.1 billion value for the district. As of August 22nd, the report showed that we're at $6.4 billion in taxable value. And so um, we're ahead of our projections. Shannon, would it be correct, however, that I believe there are probably a number of large commercial properties in the we'll also, uh, that are yeah, still yeah. fairly seriously uh, okay. disputing their value? And so, correct. would you say it's more likely that that number will come down a little it's bit? It's very likely that that number will come down. Okay, so it sounds to me like you're not really too far off of that 6.1 number. Is that also That's reasonably fair? fair? And I'll, I'll point out that last year we had to pay over two hundred fifty thousand dollars in tax. Correct. Yeah, that was previous year collected. So <laughs> I hope nice. all of you appreciated that. Uh, so I think that we're still very comfortable with. So it sounds to me like the range of this. Being yeah, that we're really probably pretty close, and we could actually end up a little under or a little it's, over. It's beyond the level of our decision <laughs> to. Uh, well, what what's good though is it seems to be a very reasonable estimate. <laughs> Good faith, we think we will come out. So that these numbers are all kind of put forward on a, on a, on a basis that people would uh, have to sort of agree that this is the best, best, not a guesstimate, the best reasonable estimate we can come up with. Okay. Uh, other questions? Is that what you're asking? Other questions? Uh, is there a motion to approve the proposed tax break for tax year 2016? important because your vote will be recorded on, if you'll notice, the next next page. So everybody here has voted on. I just want to confirm that that's correct. Great. Thank you. Is that why Kendall's out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why Kendall's out. Uh, and Mr. Chairman, we now need a motion to authorize the publication okay. of the notice. So Second. moved. Second. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Carries. Okay, on to review and consider adopting the proposed small cell hole aesthetic standards on the boundaries of the uptown district. I'm sure someone needs to explain that to yeah, us. Yeah, I'll attempt to do so. If you would uh, turn to tab three, page eight, and uh, you can begin to look at this. If you don't mind, I'm going to stand up. Uh, <coughs> All cell networks are overloaded these days. And the uh, communications industry is trying to find ways to move data and to move conversations uh, that are in addition to the towers you see on many of the buildings and which many of you may have on your buildings. They're proposing to do that by going out to the high density areas where a lot of phone calls are being made and put up uh, smaller antennas on a more frequent basis that will intercept those calls and that data usage and convert it to, uh, to fiber optic and then send it back to the, uh, the, 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 the wherever, that, wherever it goes. Um, and so what that requires is that they are coming into areas like downtown, uptown, and other parts of the city and they're putting antennas and radios that are intercepting this call. They are then running this to the fiber and then taking it back to headquarters. Um, let me just, uh, here, this is a, a national movement. This is, the city of Houston has negotiated an agreement with the cellular companies. And uh, if you remember what we went through a few years ago where Fiber companies came to town and on every street started punching holes and putting in 
fight. It's, it's almost the same kind of feeling that they have a <coughs> constitutional right to do this, and city, you can either work with us or we'll go to court. And so the city negotiated a deal that will allow them to put holes, uh, small cell holes, uh, in, in major areas. Uh, there are restrictions, um, and uh, they, you can actually have them uh, every 300 feet. Um, my personal opinion uh, that this is the biggest uh, visual blight that has occurred since billboards. Uh, and they don't care. They're in, the, they're in the communication business, and the city's very interested in trying to get them to move forward so that when we have people like Super Bowl come next year, that they'll have great cell service. Uh, and so uh, we've gone through, uh, and one of the way, one of the few ways management districts, districts like ours can impact this is that if you have set a, an aesthetic standard in your area, uh, then you can enforce that somewhat. Um, and the problem uh, that we're seeing is that we have spent all this time and money to get poles out of the area, get cables out of the area, and believe me, they're coming back. Uh, if you ask the industry what you could do, <laughs> this is what the industry thinks is a, a fantastic solution. Or <laughs> we can make it look like a tree. Oh my God, wow. Or this tree looks normal. Uh, this is actually one that's built down in the medical center. Uh, and so what can we do? Uh, they've been working with us, Lord knows, over the last year. And I want you to know we have a very bad reputation of not being very cooperative. Um, and in fact, I get a command performance Friday morning uh, down with Andy and a couple other folks to see if we can reach some kind of middle ground. I think we can. Uh, the, the, these companies have been reasonable. The guys that I've dealt with, Crown Council is who we've dealt with so far. Uh, their initial thought was that they thought this one right here would be great in front of Williams Tower. And we tried to explain to them that, yeah, that's public right of way, that's our front door, uh, et cetera. And so we have tried to get them to relocate these where possible. This one, for example, is on West Alabama, east of Post Oak Boulevard by the Dillard's parking garage in the trees. And, and, and by the way, we have a kind of a, a proposed solution in terms of design. Uh, and others, uh, this one wanted to be at the Trump corner of Post Oak Boulevard in West Hammer. Of course, that's where everybody is. We worked with them and uh, eventually co uh, convinced them that what they should do is go on the wooden pole back of the Tanglewood Shopping Center there <coughs> and just simply go on one of the poles. And I mean, the poles look bad and it's going to make them look a little worse. Uh, and so we worked everywhere one place we are going to end up with sort of a pole is here uh, on West Timer by Grand Lux. Uh, we tried to create a marriage between town council and, and uh, property owner, and, and I, that, that didn't work out. And so we're going to have a, a pole that I'll show you here in just a moment. So we uh, are proposing, uh, this is sort of where we're evolving. Uh, my big problem is that I can come up with a color to paint that that begins to let it fade into the background, but having this stuck up on it is, is a bad idea. And so our, in the little regulations you, uh, you uh, read there, I basically agree with a pole not to exceed 10 inches in diameter, that this has to be on a ground level, it can't be on any street that has less than six feet from back of curb to the property line. That these have to be put on the property line outside, out of the view here. And then we go through and we really try to find locations where they don't, where they don't really conflict as much as uh, other places. Uh, this is one at Kipling near Kirby. Uh, Paint is black. Talk to Henry Beer, uh, and he's recommending. He has a, a grade that he has specified 
that should help us. This, is, as you see, black tends to really stand out uh, in an environment like that. So in the end, uh, as you can see, here's the basket. But what we'll do is have the, the basket down here at gray. And, and so you'll just you'll get another vertical element, but you're not going to get uh, all that equipment up in the air, which is just a bigger problem. So in order to even get what we're getting, we need to adopt this as our aesthetic standards. So I, that's what I presented to you there. I think that's the last thing we had. Um, they don't like it. They don't like that we're telling them no. But the city has been pretty supportive so far. There are going to be 120 of these in downtown Houston. And they're probably all going to be something like that right there with the basket up in the air. So be glad to. Any other questions? How tall is that? Uh, they can range. Uh, our standard is it could be from 24 to uh, 32 feet tall. Uh, or we can go higher or lower, um, uh, but if they'll come talk to us. Now the, that right there, I think, is 24 feet tall. Um, they don't like that we limit it. Uh, they have requested that they could be as high as 40 feet tall. Uh, a street light out on the boulevard, the same seal, but 32 feet tall. And so um, we've tried to work with them. Uh, this is where this is where we find ourselves. So they can be at any of those three heights you mentioned. They can. They, we said that they could be from 30, 24 to thirty-two. They are fighting us because they want to be able to go to the forty. So far, the city has forty. The one thing I would ask is if there's a lot of them, kind of within one vista. That to the extent <coughs> possible. You know, at, at, at one point in this discussion, I said I wanted this painted day glow orange because I, I want the public to be so offended that, that I said I don't want to, I don't want you to act like it's part of our deal here. Uh, but I they calmed me down. Uh, Why can't they put them on top of buildings? Because it would cost more. Because uh, most likely you or others have property and then you make reasonable income of it because they make a ton of money off of it. And, and so the bottom line is they have got a sweetheart deal with the city and the, and the city seems somewhat powerless that this is a federal communication issue right. and they have the right to be in the public right of So, So it's what I, I think I'm hearing is if we don't do this or some reasonable facsimile of this, we'll have no control over what happens. Is that fair? That's correct. Okay. Um, are there any economics to this at all, other than does it anything go to the city, anything go to the district? It all goes to the city, and I, it's two thousand uh, dollars uh, a location uh, a year if, if a it's year. on an existing pole, and it's twenty seven hundred if it's on a new pole. So about 1,400, 1,400. We're going to have 14 here from this one company. Downtown, you said you have 140? And downtown's going to have 120. So it's unclear on what that is. It only this one company is doing it. Yep. So there's other companies. That are doing the limiting factor that we have is first thing I state in our standards is that you can't put one of these on both of uh, we, we encourage them to put them in uh, current easements utility easements that probably has wooden poles and everything else. And on top of wooden poles, it doesn't get that much work to what it does. Uh, but when they start coming out, then I, I, the guidelines here that we've drafted say that you can't, that box, that, that, that basket that has all <coughs> the radios and everything in, you gotta put it below ground. One company could do that. I think it's pretty hard to make something work that's electrical below ground. 
and, and so the city probably won't support me today on that, but someday when they party in radio, and they can put them in a vault, they'll do it. Uh, I, I think this is a horrible, horrible, horrible deal. And, and, and the only thing we can do is try to protect ourselves. It has even been suggested that we go out and have our own cell tower company and put one every 300 feet so that nobody can come back in here and add anything to it. Uh, is there a limit? Yeah, that's, that's the challenge. You, you, you can't, I don't care how many providers there are, the poles can't be within 300 feet of one another. So, so first in <coughs> wins, essentially. First in wins. Just out of curiosity, can you somehow incorporate whatever's inside of that tower and the little thing that's inside of the box into the light fixtures? Or a few of the light fixtures that are going to go down? <coughs> I mean, just some, somehow that incorporates it's something that's pretty, so it's, it's, it's Wait, inside of it and not outside. On Post Oak Boulevard, for example, if you'll let me do this cross section very quickly here, uh, the that island in the middle between the two bus lanes had a tree in it. Well, we're gonna actually light these trees, and we're gonna, so we're gonna light up the branches like, like our, our lights do on the side. We're gonna have a much more uh, common, almost pole with light on it, hidden in the trees and in the middle of the road. Um, we have suggested that if people would work with us, we could probably incorporate smaller antennas, smaller radios into that, but do it instead of every 300 feet, maybe every 100 feet. 120 feet. So if it's in the trees, it's sort of lost. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have offered that up. The city has backed us so far, and, and neither has the uh, Crown Capital asked for anything on Post Oak Boulevard. Because that, I mean, that seems like it'd be a, it's not the best solution, it, but it's, it's maybe the best available. We're, put, we're, we're putting in conduit today. Uh, and I'm not too sure, Robert, We've, we've got some folks that are working with us technically. We may, before it's all over with, have a proposal where we come in and put the poles on in our current design, but do it in an aesthetic way, which right. fits. I mean, it, it, it's <coughs> to a pole that's already gonna be there, yeah. and pretty, instead of adding additional poles yeah. to what's already there. So this is yeah. much smaller than anything else you saw, the thing down in the medical center, which is huge. This, uh, you know, I went over and took photographs of this this morning. Uh, it's it's bad, but it's so much better than anything that they've offered up before. One company did offer underground, and so we'll we'll play that and see where we get. John, is it fair to say that what we're really trying to do is adopt some standards that we think are reasonable, but to allow us to kind of go forward and have a better position in terms of dealing with these people when it gets down to the specifics of how to do this. In other words, we don't need to be overly concerned about the ultimate design today. Right. Is that right. the way we should look at this? Yeah. Well, you okay. clearly established they cannot be on post office over. I have, uh, I think, uh, I think bullet number two says thou shalt not. No, I'm reading. So, and so, so far I will tell you that uh, so we came out with these and Robert, what is it? They, what's the city? The city department. It's in governmental affairs, basically. Regulatory affairs. Uh, who has been? I mean, you have a regulatory affairs person, then three lawyers, and then public works. So this is really lawyered up stuff. Professional. I probably should use. And and so they came. They came out for a conference. We went over this, and I will tell you. Uh, where they thought we were being unreasonable when we laid out why we were saying what we were saying, they were up supporting it. Uh, we then sent this to Crown Council and, and immediately Crown Council sent back about a five page rebuttal to it. And, and so in the end, um, we, we've, we've said, let's sit down next Friday, or this Friday morning, morning and see if we can't work out a way to go forward. And I think the go forward is gonna be something that looks like that with the basket not on it, a little bit uh, a different color. And um, not on, you know, on property lines, not out by the street and uh, in, in the easement.
sense where we can get them. I mean, and on the crucible, it the best I'm trying, we're trying to do it the best we can in the difficult systems. John, final question for me. Um, once this network is in, um, do they, uh, do these providers need to adhere to the same provisions of relocation that any fiber carrier or anyone else would have to adhere to if if someone wants to develop their property and needs to move this stuff? City of Houston, I think, can tell Center Point Energy you need to move your coal because we're widening the street. I don't know <coughs> that the private sector can say there's a pole in public right of way, uh, but it's going to be at my front door. Yeah, we know how to deal with that. It usually involves writing large checks. Yep. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's relocatable. As long as there's another location that you, you know, uh, there's no reason why you could. It's fiber optic. In other words, John, they're going to be as reasonable as center point is every time they're asked <laughs> to do it. This is not. Well, is there? That's what I look at. Can and Robert, I think add to Robert, if anything I'm saying, I'm saying you want to add to it. Can another company come in and just add to that pool another basket? <laughs> there is a, a supposed to be enough room for a, a multiple radios in this basket so that you have to provide at least capacity for one other provider to come in with that. So even if you own all the coal, another company could come in and compete, and you've got to provide them room. Now, there's a limit to that. Are you, and I assume these poles are connected by some form of conduit underground to one another. Right. They are connected, they're fiber connected, but, but, plus they, but they have to have electricity, so they have to have electrical source somewhere, and as you can see, uh, our, your, the, the meter is here. Mm -hmm. um, I think that what we'll try to do is get that meter put on this when it's brought down here to the ground level and move back to the parking lot. And so, it, trying to clean it up. Is it high heat support for them? It's definitely high heat support. So. The 40 feet, Look, I think that what this says is this is what our rules are. If you want, if you want something different than our rules, you need to come visit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that can lead to, I mean, Robert. So if, uh, if Robert was mean, if all he, he, he lights, said no until they got a good location. If all our new street lights are 12 feet high, yeah. could we not limit all of theirs to 12 feet high? Probably not. The, 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 first of all, I'm just asking. I'm not. They're not that. Uh, they're, I mean, having a, a big 10 inch something that's stubby, 14 foot tall, actually being a little bit taller tends to stretch it a little bit. Yeah. You know? But if we can. Go on for grace. If, if you yeah. can, if you can put it in locations where it's not. I mean, it's not. We're really close. So far, they're not putting anything. Not proposing anything <coughs> close to this one. Which is terribly important. We went to the mat with them on Westheimer, and, and 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 I think the property owner tried to work a deal with them, but the property owner typically gets a lot more than the twenty-seven hundred dollars that uh, they they get by by paying the city. Um, There on, there's quite a few of those. On, if we go back and look at the map on Sage Road, let me give you, I'm going to just very quickly go through this, but I do want, I will tell you, City of Houston isn't fighting this as much as I think we would, but real quickly, these two are in easements, backside of property, uh, able to shoot Post Oak Boulevard at large, et cetera. This is east of Post Oak Boulevard by the dealer's garage. This is east of Post Oak Boulevard the Hidalgo Pond is right in here. It's in the trees right there. The, if we're going down south, uh, we have fought with them extensively over this. There's wooden poles down here on McHugh. We said put it on there. They go, oh my goodness, no, we need that other hundred, we need that other 80 feet to go to the north side of Richmond. I'm still fighting that. I'm saying no to that. Uh, this is, uh, I've got pictures of all these locations. This is kind of a non 
it really doesn't matter. This is by some apartments here. This is apartments here on Hidalgo. This is back on a wooden pole on Rice. So there's not a whole lot of problem. Wooden pole, wooden pole, wooden pole. And so there's, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six right now that are on the new metal pole. And this limits the amount that they can have. They literally could come in and put one up every 300 feet. So I would think it would look like a grid. It, it, it would, and so 300 feet, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, you could put six, it's 3,400 feet between San Felipe and West Diamond. You can put 10, 12 of them. So, uh, you can imagine kind of what conversations have been. It's pretty intense. And uh, this is, this is uh, highly unacceptable and offensive to the provider. Um, as I said, their equipment was in our front yard. Therefore, you feel it's definitely acceptable to us. I would hope it is offensive to them. I have hoped that it, it would uh, say that we uh, don't think that you should take our visual environment for your profit and everybody else's Our message loss. is that we believe this is important to protect yes. the neighborhood. And we're willing to compromise, but only to a limited degree to enable you to do what you need to do in the fashion that's the least offensive to us. And see, I think also technology is evolving so quickly. I can't imagine that you know this is going to be this big hanging off the side of a building. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're saying that if they'd work with us on the median, we could go to smaller antennas. Literally, that top little bucket is is a. I kind of like the cactus myself. <laughs> <laughs> Those but four other towers yeah. just really grab yeah. me. Well, if they're <laughs> proud. By the way, I want you to know if I can't put them they're, they're, they're proud of this. They're proud of this. <laughs> Why couldn't you put it in the hills? Just to lower it down. <laughs> okay. Do we have any more one, questions? One, one quick question. Okay. If any consideration is given to putting them in the right of way to see it, it won't do what they need. That's that's the correct answer is yeah. when we're sitting here, uh, what they're wanting to do is that the uh, the cellulars are overloaded, so they really want to intercept it, and it has to be a certain strength to be able to manhandle it away from going out <coughs> the cellular versus it catching that d uh, data transmission and taking its fiber, and so it's got to be a, a good clear, clear strong signal, and that's why they're fighting with us. We want them on the south side of Richmond uh, up at McHugh on Wooden Pole, and they're saying, oh, it's the end of the world if we aren't on the north side of Richmond <coughs> on a metal pole. And they think that 80 plus some feet uh, is all the difference in the world. So I, I should have asked my question. But I will tell you, John, just us trying to tell them how to do their business is somewhat like us trying to tell someone how to build a nuclear reactor. Uh, we can hire people who know, but it's hard to gain the leverage on them. And so you start saying, fine, I don't know your technology, but you can't put anything up in the air. You've got to put it below the ground. And that could do the same as six poles we have. No, no, no. <laughs> no I mean, one can afford to stand stainless steel. Exactly. But, but we, that's our standard. Right. And bury and not having any coal is our standard. And so this is a violation of our aesthetic standards in the area to even allow them to come into. But I think the city thinks that that case is not defensible in the court. So Sorry, the what, what, what's the alternative? You just said no. They do it anyway. They have that. It's, it's, it's not our property. They're putting they the have that. They, they do have a right to do that. Yeah. Here's the here's thing. They already went and started this. They've already done some of their underground fiber work in this area. Robert has worked hard to run them off. Uh, Upper Kirby has that pole uh, on Timmins right across from the old summit. Uh, was installed without <coughs> Upper Kirby's approval. 
as was the black one. Uh, the renegade. Right. Uh, it's just like syrup. So one, one, one thing I want to focus on. Um, you said one of these uh, carriers has underground technology. Uh, in a meeting, they said they could. That's that's the value I place on that. And by the way. Here's, here, Robert's wanting to say something. You're still going to put the antenna up. They're still going to have their electrical uh, meter up, even if they get everything else down below. We're still going to have stuff above grad radius to go. Not going to work. You're just not going to have the box. Not going to it's the about box. that box. The rest of and so, Center Point won't go in the box. That <coughs> they want a separate access to their meter. And, it's all going to be a and so, we can <coughs> continue to offer to say, if you want a great shot along Post Oak Boulevard, which is really what they're trying to do, work with us on the designs. We can do it more frequently, use smaller equipment, but they only have a half inch wrench and they're just out trying to do it. We're, we're continuing, and the city will help push that. So far, the city has not with us, no poles and post up. That helps a little. Right. Okay. Any other questions before we take up? Anybody want, would like to make a motion to adopt these proposed small cell pole space standards? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? tell you, I've been informed by several of our board members that uh, the north end of Post Up Boulevard is down to one lane uh, as they try to come to the meeting today. In order to implement oh, our sorry. traffic control, which is two lanes in each direction with a turn lane in the middle, we have to clear up the middle. In this section of, of Post Oak, we have the, the great change because of the curve, and therefore we had to actually slice into this lane and lower it build up this lane to get a flat enough surface to do that. So, but today they were doing the asphalt work to, uh, to widen that part and we're down to one lane uh, southbound to do that with an RP tower. Also we're doing this up as, as we have gotten a number of complaints by the residents because there are a lot of residential properties right in this location as to the noise and uh, uh, it does impact southbound movement but flowing and it does cause a, a significant delay. We've got temporary signals up at Coral Pearson and Uptown Park uh, Harbors. Those signals on the span wires now and wind poles are can be adjusted so that when we move traffic in, in the first phase we're going to move traffic from approximately this area we're going to drop this curb lane. With the two lanes over here we'll go northbound in the middle Southbound the stays where they are. Two lanes in each direction with the turn movement. Concrete median barrier to create an area where we can do the storm sort of work up towards McDonald's. And uh, going from McDonald's both north and south. Um, and that's our first phase of construction. Until we're, the storm's done, then we'll flip over and go to the southbound side and move in all the traffic to the northbound side. But uh, at this point, uh, they are still setting up for the major traffic change. I would think that it's not going to be this week. It's going to be uh, maybe on the weekend, but early next week we'll be actually moving the traffic over and operating on the striper and the median barrier should show up some more. All right, what happens when we get to season? Holiday season. Nothing happens here. We don't have any work south of actually four oaks. Whereas we were going to have work up to San Felipe, we're staying up at the Four Oaks area, 
So we will continue to work with the two lane in each direction left turn during the holiday season up here. So nothing south of Camp Lee. Nothing south of Camp Lee. It won't start until after the Super Bowl. We won't award contracts till probably January. We won't work south of Camp Lee. Robert, you have an opportunity to talk about the arches? The arches, again, only stand far enough for the current design of the divided boulevard. Since we're widening the, the boulevard, we will widen the arches. But since the first set of arches has been conflict for us to do work underneath it, so we have to lift it up. Where the current foundations are here, we're going to put foundations behind on both sides. And that work was supposed to start up yesterday, but it has, the driller hasn't shown up yet, and we haven't started drilling interior drive. We have the extensions coming in from Ohio uh, next week or the first, uh, yeah, first week of October. Uh, and we should have, in the month of October, drilled the new piers, got them set, ready to be put the new uh, arch on them. Then we will come in with hydraulic lifts behind the fence underneath the arches. We'll attach a beam to the arches. With a sleeve that will hold the arches in place so that we're not drilling or anything. We're grabbing the arches, sticking them to a beam, putting lifts on them, and cutting them loose in the middle of the night. Once they're loose and they're on the new support, we'll raise them up 20 feet, bring in the new extensions on all four corners, position them right, weld them, cut the bottoms after rechecking three times the length and where the anchor rods are, the bolts that you're going to attach them to, we'll cut the, uh, the arches and weld on the base plate. And then in the middle of the night, somewhere toward the end of the month, two cranes will come in, pick up right where we're supporting the arches behind here, grab them, lift them up, and place them down on the new anchor bolt. <laughs> <laughs> Robert, uh, if I could ask the board to please uh, pull your chin back up. Now, please. Now, please. Uh, Robert, will we, uh, the trees are likely to remain in place until after the first of the year? These trees here are not in conflict with any of the street or the arch work, so they're going to stay for until we're, uh, we want. To Possibly to until after the yeah. first of the year. To take them out, we'd have to take some of the concrete out, and we don't need to do that at this moment. Trees aren't needed. So we just left them there. Uh, we are going to retain in front of the fences a six foot of asphalt or concrete that there is a pedestrian there. So a lot of these things are lifts in the air, pedestrian movement can continue, vehicle movement can continue, and we won't be working behind the fence. The, uh, and the structural engineering analysis says it won't fall over. It's really good reading if you really want to read it. We, uh, we have a we all hope never to happen. <laughs> I try. All right. Uh, any other questions for Robert? I will. I will tell you that we uh, make great progress on the right of way acquisition, uh, and uh, we are about uh, ninety percent, eighty-eight point five, I think, on closed during the five jumpers. Uh, and so, uh, and we, and the city has moved on a couple properties uh, using their powers. Any other questions on uh, the Postal Boulevard project? Should you give an update on parks? I'll uh, walk you out for you. I'm in the wrong.
Questions? 